Hello everyone, here I am with the video explanation of your ophthalmology quiz investigation tools in ophthalmology. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for your overwhelming response, your participation, showing so much of interest uh, and uh, then uh, uh, that is why because you people are proactive that uh, tends to activate me and keep me boosted up to uh, attend your every uh, of the request and because you were uh, saying everybody of you were saying that we need a video explanation so here I am. So let's start with the question number one. The 45 years male patient complains of loss of vision in the left eye. So this patient is having loss of vision in the left eye, right? And he has a history of trauma few months back. See, when there is a question, every word counts there. So he has a history of trauma that is few months back. And they are saying that his anterior segment is normal, fundus is also normal. So, uh, can you think of something here that uh, they had a trauma but now anterior segment is normal, fundus is normal. So, what can be there? They can be amblyopia. Are you getting this? Because now you are not getting any finding there and you are getting just 45 degree esotropia in the left eye. Now, the moment I know you had seen this, you must have marked this option, right? Why? Because there is a diplopia. You were thinking that it, it's a esotropia. Esotropia means uh, the squint and squint means the diplopia. But examiner has specifically said that anterior segment normal, fundus normal. Now before we actually uh, go to the answer of this question, let us try to see first the concepts of this test because few of, your, of the students were asking about this test, right? So this is actually called as worth four dot test worth four dot test and uh, this is actually done with the help of a diplopia goggles we have got red in front of right eye r say r you have to consider red in front of the right eye and green in front of the left eye like this is by convention we can do it the other way around also but by convention we are doing this now, when the person is putting these diplopia goggles and he is not having any squint, if he is having autophoria, then he will see these four lights. He will see these four lights. Means one red, one white and two green lights he will see. So, if he is having a normal binocular single vision, he will see these four lights without any squint you are not able to see any squint but and he is able to see all the four lights normal but there is another possibility when he is able to see the four lights but there is a squint in him right so this person is having a squint if he is seeing the four lights and you are having the squint that means he had developed the abnormal retinal correspondence but here the case is different because they are not saying anything about the uh, what type of uh, binocular vision he has whether there is a normal retinal correspondence or whether there is abnormal but they are telling you indirectly that fundus is normal and there is segment normal right now what are the other possibilities there are possibilities that there is suppression of the eyes there can be a suppression of right eye there can be a suppression of left eye so if there is a right eye suppression you will not see the patient will not see red he will see three green and if there is a left eye suppression he will not see red red then he uh, uh, then he will not see the green he will see the two red right because red was in front of the right eye and green was in front of the left eye so right eye suppression three green left eye suppression two red now if he is seeing them alternatively sometimes three green sometimes two red so that means he is having alternating suppression and if he is seeing all the five lights 
टू रेड एंड थ्री ग्रीन ऑल द फाइव लाइट दैट मीन ही इज हैविंग डिप्लोपिया सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर वॉट इज वर्थ फॉर डॉट टेस्ट वॉट इज नॉर्मल वॉट इज एब नॉर्मल वॉट आर द डिफरेंट पॉसिबिलिटीज वॉट आर डिप्लोपिया गॉगल्स एंड हाउ अ नॉर्मल पर्सन इज गोइंग टू सी द लाइट नाउ वेन दिस इज क्लियर लेट्स गो बैक टू द क्वेश्चन एंड ट्राई टू सी वॉट आर द ऑप्शन गिवन देर now one they have seen they are showing you the first option where it is absolutely normal right he is seeing one red two green and one white now here he will not see this because he is having the isotropia he is having the isotropia so i can rule this out right now another option is that when he is seeing both means he is seeing two red and three green now this is also not there because this person is not complaining of diplopia his anterior segment is normal his fundus is normal so he is not having any diplopia now if you see to the d option he is seeing the two white and three green now this is not the option this is not a possible option in cases of worth for dot test so you are left with b in which you are seeing two red two red means that there is a left eye suppression <clears throat> because there is a left eye suppression so he is seeing only the red lights which are seen which are put in front of the right eye is that clear now try to see analyze this question <clears throat> there was a problem with the left eye of this person he had a loss of vision in the left eye when he had a trauma in this eye a few months back but now anterior segment is normal fundus is normal that means this person has developed amblyopia in this eye and due to the amblyopia there is a left eye suppression there is a left eye suppression and that is why he is actually seeing only the two red are you getting this so this was a tricky question that you start thinking in those terms if you are not thinking about the amblyopia definitely it will be a challenging question for you right all right now see the second question i think this is a very very simple question the optical instrument can you see the images which are going decrease and decrease in size so this is actually similar this is similar to the snellens chart this is actually similar to the snellens chart where you are seeing the topmost letter which is largest then the size of the letter goes on decreasing and uh, this will give you like 6 by 60 vision 6 by 36 6 by 24 6 by 18 6 by 12 and what are the things that you are seeing here the these are the simple pictures so i can say that this is a simple picture chart therefore it is a simple picture chart so let us see what this simple picture chart will be used for options are contrast sensitivity no testing the visual acuity in infants infants means less than 1 year will the infant who is less than 1 year of age will be able to tell me is this a flower or this is a house or this is a butterfly will they tell me no subjective refinement of refraction for the subjective refinement we are using like a jackson cross cylinders right so we are not using this this is a simple picture chart so what it is used for it is used for testing the visual acuity in the pre school children the children who are toddlers who are very small to read the letters who even cannot help you with the e chart or the landol c chart in those cases we use the simple picture chart right okay now coming to the third question identify the test undertaken by the patient in the image so actually there are a lot of uh, image based questions which are being added nowadays and though this uh, uh, kind of test is not very commonly asked but still we have to give a uh, 
extra access to the images we have to be prepared for the extra images uh, keeping in mind that more and more image based questions will be coming in future and now the number of questions of ophthalmology is also like proposed to be increased from 10 to 15 they are being asked now and then in next paper they will be 60 so that is why i have added this this is actually your farnswell munsell 100 u test which is used as a tool for color vision now uh, even if you have not seen the image of this test i don't think that it's very tough for you people to actually uh, get the answer of this question because you know the other things ishiara color test you know that it contains the print and we have got the numbers written with one color and background is of different color so at least this you can recognize that this is not a Shiara color chart. Okay. Now, Jackson cross cylinders. If you look at uh, the Jackson cross cylinders, how do they look like? So, the Jackson cross cylinders are like this. We have got a flip cross technique. You know, I have uh, 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 told you also in the test in ophthalmology i had shared one video on uh, my youtube channel uh, where i had shared the tests in important tests in ophthalmology there i have showed you the whole uh, procedure how to use this jackson cross cylinders we are using the flip cross technique there it's a spherocylindrical cylindrical combination where the power of the sphere is half of the cylinder with the opposite sign so ultimately it gives us two cylinders with same power and they are perpendicular so with opposite axis so that is your jackson cross cylinder so it is not a jackson cross cylinders and uh, what was the other option they say pelai robson charting pelai robson chart so it's not a chart as well that is actually used for the contrast sensitivity that is used for the contrast sensitivity and uh, I have shared this chart of contrast sensitivity on my telegram group also, right. So, this Pelai robson chart is actually used for the contrast sensitivity. So, it is very clear that this is a 100 U test. Now, in this respect, I would like you to see the other images that we can use for the color vision. Like for example, if you see this this is your what is called as hardy rand rittler rand rittler hardy rand rittler test then can you see at this is a lantern kind of a pattern this is called as the lantern test this is your lantern test then this I have shown you this is the Jackson cross cylinders and this one is your <coughs> Nagel anomeloscope. Nagel's anomeloscope. So I think the looking at the pictures and recognizing them with pictures itself is sufficient and uh, <coughs> even if you are able to recognize them just the names then that will be suffice okay. Then another important thing is that um, if you see this one, uh, Farns with Munsell 100 U test, one thing is important to remember here that it is actually 100 U test, but it does not contain the 100 caps. It contains 85 U caps. It is called as 100 U test, but it contains 85 U caps and it is actually the most sensitive test. And that is why it is important. This is the most sensitive test both for the congenital blindness, color blindness as well as for the acquired. This is going to be the most sensitive one. All right. Okay. Now coming to the next question, question number five. Which of the following is not true? Now first of all, try to recognize what is this? This is your what you called as the shorts right this is your shorts indentation shorts indentation tonometer it is a shorts indentation tonometer and 
and this tonometer is actually most commonly used tonometer for the screening purpose. So, the main difference between this shots tonometer and the Goldman's applination tonometer is that in the shots tonometer suppose um, this is your uh, cornea. So, in cases of the short stonometer, it is the truncated cone which is occurring because we are indenting the cornea, it is like this. While in cases of the applanation tonometer, if this is the cornea, then just the flattening is taking place. So, that is the basic difference between the truncated cornea and the flattened cornea or applanated cornea. Are you getting this? So, the first option they are saying, they are telling you that which of the following is not true. So, which is the wrong statement? So, first statement is the shape of the deformation of cornea is a truncated cornea. So, this is correct statement, right? Now, second they are saying that due to the inadvertent accommodation during the procedure, there is a lowering of IOP during the measurement. Now, try to understand what is happening. If you look at here, it has got this base, disc, foot plate. Right. So, if you look at this foot plate, it has to actually go and touch over the cornea. So, if we first anesthetize the cornea, patient is lying supine and we ask the patient to look at his own thumb and we stabilize the cornea. Now, we are putting this foot plate over the cornea after giving the corneal anesthesia. So, obviously, when any object is going so close to the cornea, patient uh, tries to accommodate because he, he, okay, so that is a natural process when an object is coming very, very close. So, what will happen now? When he tries to accommodate, there will be contraction of the ciliary muscle. So, due to the contraction of the ciliary muscle, the trabecular spaces will open up that will increase the aqueous outflow and that is why there is a, that is not a major one, but there is some amount of decrease in trochlear pressure which is taking place during the measurement. So, this statement is also right, okay. Now, number three. Friedenwald nomogram is used as IOP pressure conversion tables. Now, obviously, you have to use the conversion tables because when you are measuring it, what is happening? This pointer is giving me the reading. So, that reading is not coming in mm of mercury and you have to measure this pressure in the mm of mercury, right? So, I have to use a conversion factor, a conversion table like in Goldman's Applination Tonometer we use the conversion factor 10. Similarly, here also we use the tables and the name of these tables are Friedenwald nomogram table. So, this statement is also right. So, obviously by default your answer will be D. Now, let us try to see this. If the scale reading is less than 4 with a starting weight of 5.5, additional weight is added. Now, this is wrong because if it is less than 3, then we actually use the additional weights. Then we use the additional weights. Like we have 5.5, we have 7.5, right? We have got 10 grams, 5.5, 7.5. 10 and 15. These are the weights. So, we start with the 5.5 and if the reading is less than 3, then you have to measure it with the extra weights. So, that should be very, very clear. Then coming to the next question, what is the most likely diagnosis? Now, this is again a beautiful question where your so many concepts will be tested. First of all, you should know what is actually this. So, this is your perimetry. Okay. This is a uh, sheet showing you perimetry and it is a kind of the static perimetry, right? And it is actually the Humphreys field analyzer by which you are getting this. Now, they are asking you what is the diagnosis, okay. Now, uh, let me tell you when you uh, do this, you have to understand here that uh, which eye is which one, 
okay you have to be very very clear that here my right side will be the right eye and left side will be the left eye like we consider in this perimetric findings as if the patient is sitting like us okay so if if this is your blind spot okay so blind spot is due to the optic disc so this will show you the temporal visual field now i will repeat this concept again the optic disc lies nasally so the scotoma which will be there due to this optic disc will lie in the temporal visual field so this is the blind spot due to the optic nerve head and optic nerve head lies in the nasal retina and nasal retina will correspond to the temporal visual field so i will say that this is the right eye this is very very clear now see the uh, type of the defect that you are seeing here see if i draw it it is something like this so what is this now you will be able to get it so this is actually your arcuate scotoma can you see very beautifully it is coming arcuate scotoma now let us try to see retinitis pigmentosa do you get uh, arcuate scotoma in retinitis pigmentosa no what do we get here here we get the ring shaped scotoma so answer will not be retinitis pigmentosa open angle glaucoma open angle glaucoma yes this could be there because in open angle glaucoma we have isopter contraction bearing of blind spot then we have paracentral then we have sedal we have arcuate we have double arcuate then we have central vision that is a tunnel vision then that is also lost and last to go is temporal so yes answer can be open angle glaucoma what about pituitary adenoma now pituitary adenoma is a tumor which is compressing the nasal fiber so this will cause your bitemporal bitemporal hemi anopia while if you see the temporal lobe temporal lobe in fact will cause the pi in the sky appearance pi in the sky means superior quadrant anopia superior quadrant anopia so you are very clear that the answer is open angle glaucoma all right now coming to the next question now see this what is this the person is wearing a headband and looking it uh, the into the eye of a patient with an extra lens so this is actually mostly plus 20d lens and this is your indirect ophthalmoscope this is your indirect ophthalmoscope so let us try to see what is not true because again they are asking you except number 1 it's a binocular procedure very correct it's a binocular procedure you don't have to close one eye and see right number 2 patient is examined in the sitting position i think you don't even need the reading of uh, this topic see they have shown you that the patient is lying supine right so obviously answer is this patient is not examined in the sitting position patient in the is in the supine position and that is actually the beauty of image based questions because sometimes answer is given in the question itself now see third the examiner stands opposite to the clocker position to be examined yes now if you know about indirect ophthalmoscopy you will get this because you know that the indirect ophthalmoscopy gives us real and inverted image which is only 5 times magnified we know this right which is only 5 times magnified so obviously the patient has to stand opposite to the clocker position to be examined because this will give me real and inverted image so answer is uh, i mean uh, this is a true option answer they are asking you the false one so this is also a true option
Then D, it can be used to examine or diagnose a case of papilledema. Yes, we can use it, not a problem. Now, though it's, they are not saying that it is the best one because many students have marked this thinking that it's a papilledema, optic disc defect. So, we, we need to do the direct ophthalmoscopy. Correct. That is the best one. But it can be used. They are saying it can be used. Yes, it can be used. You can see optic disc with this. So, therefore, this is also a true, true statement. Next question, which of the following test is inadequate during the early screening in the ABA patient? Now, first try to see what is this actually. Can you see this uh, hyperpigmented area here? This is your hyper, then this is your hypo and then again we have a hyperpigmented area. So, this is actually a typical case of the bullseye maculopathy. It is a case of bullseye maculopathy and nowadays I think more and more these questions will come because you know chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are being used so much. So this is actually caused by the chloroquine or the hydroxychloroquine toxicity and uh, uh, you must have gone through the video. I have taken full video on this bullseye maculopathy. What are the important things? And in that even I have explained you that what are the tests that you have to do initially what are the five tests I had told you about the rule of five if you have not seen not a problem go today and have a look that is a beautiful video and I have tried to uh, make it very very uh, short and crisp so that uh, immediately you will grasp what are the important things I want to tell you about the bullseye maculopathy but then too in short I have uh, tried to concise here now see uh, according to the latest guidelines of American uh, Academy of Ophthalmology, they have said that because you know after 5 years of continued use of this uh, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, if you are using them in large doses, daily doses more or the cumulative doses are more, then obviously there is a risk of this bullseye maculopathy after 5 years. So 5 is the important thing here. After 5 years, there is a risk of bullseye maculopathy, not after 1 year, 2 year, 3 year, it is after 5 years. So, we, we need to do a baseline uh, screening so that if the patient is developing the signs of toxicity, we are able to compare with the normal one. So, what are the 5 things that we need to do? The first is the visual acuity and the fundus examination. Look at the fundus if there is any defect from beforehand only. Number 2, fields. The biomicroscopy along with the Humphreys visual field analysis. I have just shown you the Humphreys field analysis because you know if there is some defect of the macula, if there is some defect in the fundus, obviously it will hamper the fields also. Third F is the fundus autofluorescence because you know this defect is an autofluorescent defect. So keep our autofluorescent defect. Uh, scan also handy and then we have got the spectral domain OCT along with the multifocal ERG. Those of you do not know what is spectral domain OCT, spectral domain means you are able to dissect at each of the retinal layers. And they have said that certain investigations are very very inadequate even if you are doing for the early screening. So, in that we have got certain things and I have tried to um, make them uh, in alphabetical order. So, that will help you in remembering that is A for Emsler grid. So, that is inadequate. Okay. B for biomicroscopy alone. If you are doing only biomicroscopy, not with the field, then it is inadequate. C for color vision. If you are just seeing color vision, that is not adequate. D is for field. So, if this is A, this is your A, then B, then C, then D. If you are doing just the field, full field ERG, not sufficient. Then E, E for EOG. Then F, F for FFA. Then we have got F for fundus photography. 
and then we have time domain OCT not the spectral domain. So these are certain things which are inadequate and like you have to learn them that these are inadequate according to the latest guidelines and if you are not doing any five of them and we are doing any one of them then that will be considered to be inadequate. So if you look at the options here what all the options they have given they have given you multifocal ERG so that is a good one to do fluorescein angiography so that was a F so this is insufficient now because they have just written OCT Okay, if I have one OCT and angiography, so I think angiography is a better one because spectral domain OCT is done, Humphreys field analysis is done. So therefore, the answer is the fluorescein angiography. I hope now this is very, very clear. Then it is used to evaluate. So what is this? This is actually the Amsler grid test. This is the Amsler grid test which is used as a macular function test. It is used as a macular function test to analyze the central field. Now what portion of the central field for the central 20 degree not for the periphery because it is used for the macular function not for the lens opacity and not for 10 degree it is used for central 20 degree. So if I get the wavy pattern that will show the macular lesion and if I am getting the missing lines if I am getting the missing lines that means it is a optic nerve lesion that will show that it's a optic nerve lesion then finally which instrument is given in the image I think this is a very very clear one this is not a lid retractor or a cryoprobe. I think only confusion is that whether it's a scoop or clamp. Now when you are seeing this hollow area, can it be a scoop? Scoop jo hoga, that will be spoon like. Scoop is actually the spoon like. Because you will like you have the ice cream scoops, you have to scoop out the content. So empty thing cannot scoop out. So this is actually a clamp for fixing the calisyon and putting the IND. So very clear it is a calisyon clamp. So this was about uh, this quiz investigating tools. Um, uh, right now like we are getting very busy in the um, recordings and all and I, I think you will be uh, requiring some break as uh, there is a festival, we have Eid, we have Rakhi going on and uh, I am planning to keep a mega quiz so that uh, uh, within this time you can make best out of it so that uh, all the questions that we have done till now can be grasped uh, at your best. So try to go through all the PDF, try to see what are your queries. Every day I will open the group for uh, some time so that you can ask your doubts so that we can just brush up our knowledge that we have acquired and gained up till now and I will be coming with some more Dhamaka questions on uh, my mega quiz. So Till then, keep studying, keep uh, working hard. That is very, very important. Stay home, stay safe and happy ophthalmology.